been. And also Ken Stabler, the quarterback, uh, was one of the roasters. And they wanted me to get Leroy to do it. And I called Leroy, and he said, what do you do? I said, well, you just make fun of the guy. You say bad things about him. He said, well, I can't do that. I said, well, you do. It's OK. Everybody expects you to say bad things at a roast. He said, well, I don't like to say bad things about people. I said, it's OK, Leroy. It's a roast. Well, the night of the roast happens. I introduce him. He gets up says nothing but good things about <laughs> Ray Perkins. That was a stretch, by the way, if you knew Ray Perkins, <laughs> that he could find anything good to say about him. Uh, but it was just in his nature, he couldn't say bad things about people. He couldn't do anything wrong. He couldn't do anything bad. My first jersey as a kid was number 63 as a 12-year-old kid. And Leroy Summon first came to the Bucks. My folks were like, what are those colors? Where is that team? My first jersey I ever owned was Leroy Salmon's. My college number in college was 93, same number as him. Um, my college coach, Jimmy Johnson, coached Leroy at Oklahoma. So when I got to the Buccaneers, there was Leroy Salmon, and I was like, holy, there he is. I got to go over and beat the guy. He goes, hey, Jimmy called me, wanted me to, and I'm like, he was more impressed with meeting me than I was him, and I'm like, I just, you, you spun the table in the room on me, Hoss. This is not good. I don't like it. You're my idol. He goes, no, I'm really, he made everybody welcomed that came in and wore the fraternity of being a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. And back in those days, it wasn't fashionable uh, because there was a lot of losing. Um, but it was, again, more than just losing and winning and losing with him. It was more being a community guy. It was more being representative of the city. Um, and it was really a great honor to have him as kind of the signature face of the Buccaneer franchise, which I still think is today. Leroy Selman was taught how to love at a very young age. Growing up in a small Oklahoma farmhouse with no air conditioning or plumbing wasn't easy for Leroy, but his parents' love for him and his brother Dewey helped them through the difficult times. I think a lot of his qualities uh, came from his home life. Uh, very humble beginnings, um, came from uh, a family that had uh, great, taught great qualities, uh, uh, great characteristics in growing up, uh, hard work, uh, faith, uh, dedication, uh, humbleness, commitment, and uh, if you had a chance to meet any of Leroy's siblings, you know, you would find those same qualities a lot in the siblings that he grew up with. And uh, so I think the traits were probably uh, some great Midwestern values and, and a lot of it came from his family life. When Leroy walked in a room, there was a presence. Uh, you know, he had a certain amount of uh, uh, charisma when he walked into a room and, and during meetings, he didn't say a lot. Um, maybe a little bit like E.F. Hudden. Uh, but I would tell you when he did talk, you know, it was, it was, and, and when he would comment, you know, it was something that, that I think everybody paid attention to. I, I know I certainly did. It wasn't about money to Leroy, you know, it was about, it was about impact and it was about impact and others. And he loved these kids. He loved these student athletes. He loved these youths and, and he loved Tampa Bay a lot. For me, knowing that he was going to be a part of this uh, family, a part of this athletic department, it even made the job more appealing to me because I knew he and I could work together on a daily basis and, uh, and had some great experiences and he was a great mentor in a lot of ways, uh, uh, provided a lot of great direction and experience and, uh, and uh, was really helpful uh, in, in, a lot, in moving this athletic department forward over the last uh, several years. More importantly though, Leroy Sun had a deep love for God and family. Uh, I would see him at church occasionally and he would just have that humble family man approach. I would say that there's probably no one more impactful with his faith um, from a Tampa Bay standpoint than Leroy Selman. I know he was very proud of his children and his grandchildren. You know, we talked about it because hopefully I'll have some grandchildren just like him. You know, he was a colleague of mine. I used to see him, you know, at the football games and at the athletic center. And when we talked, we always talked about our children. Many people probably wonder if Leroy Selman became angry during his life. I never saw any anger in him. 
And uh, I think that's, uh, I think he always left, and even in his negotiations, I think Leroy would always leave somebody a way out. You know, he was uh, compassionate, and, uh, and I think that's what I'm going to miss about him. And my, you know, the memories that I have of Leroy Selman is going to be a blessing to me forever. Maybe it was Leroy Selman's overwhelming love towards all individuals that helped dispel that anger from his life. Regardless, the love towards Leroy Selman was reciprocal. Leroy not only represented everything good about football, but he represented everything good about life. And I said before, if, every, if all of us could lead our life a little bit more like Leroy Selman, it'd be a better world. Uh, it's one of the reasons that we have changed the name of this building. And uh, this building now will be named the uh, Leroy Selman Athletic Center. And my hope is that every athlete that comes in here will notice that name and will hopefully understand and be able to look up the qualities that Leroy Selman represented and they'll all have an opportunity, hopefully, to, during the time they're here, uh, try to live their life a bit more like that, and, and both as a student and as an athlete and as a person. And uh, if, if that affects anybody that comes through these doors, it'll, it'll have a positive effect. I can remember uh, uh, seeing him in a small little cubby office when he was trying to get football off the ground. So, uh, you know, he definitely has a, a, a firm legacy over at the University of South Florida. That's just one of them. So they're, they're going to miss him over there. And uh, they're not going to forget Leroy Selman because uh, they can't. And the, the name of the whole building over there is, is, is after him. I mean, uh, I think the, the, the facilities at, at the University of South Florida is the crown jewel uh, in the NCAA, and Leroy had a big part in raising the money for that. You know, uh, you saw what's going on on their brand new uh, Sundome uh, basketball facility, baseball facility, uh, football facility, um, and, and Leroy had a major part in that, and uh, his legacy will be on forever. We are going to have a statue of him in front of that center. He's beloved, and he is He's missed terribly, but never, ever forgotten. That I loved him. I love you, Leroy. I don't know if I said I loved him uh, that Thursday before uh, he left here. I think he knows that. and. Uh, uh, you know, again, he just, I, I really um, uh, appreciated and look back at that hour probably that we spent together on Thursday. And I don't know that it was any different than any other time that we had, but knowing it was, you know, for the last time that we were able to be together on this earth, it was, uh, you know, I cherish the time that we were able to do that. His book may be completed now, but man, it's on the bestseller bookshelf. I mean, it is really, it'll be one of those books you read forever. Leroy was a role model. Um, he was a role model to, to, the, to the older people, the people his age, um, people that knew him from when he played football, um, but probably more so the youths. Um, I've got my little brother from the Big Brothers Big Sisters with me, and, and uh, Leroy would always do a lot for uh, the not-so-fortunate kids. Um, maybe the kids that didn't have a father, um, people that maybe struggled a little bit, the uh, grassroots athletic programs. And I think that, uh, you know, the dads out there that knew the real Leroy um, have taken his legacy on to, um, to the youths, the youths and the kids of, of tomorrow because that's what he was all about with his four kids. and. I think that Leroy would like for his legacy to live on to other, other generations, and I think it will. And that's what men need to think about, is what is their legacy going to be? We're not going to be around here forever. Someday we're going to leave this place. And what are people going to think about us? We are building that legacy right now. In the end, Leroy Selman showed us that there's more to life than touchdowns and championships. It's about making a difference in the community, taking time to listen to people in need, and giving rather than taking. That's what molded the man behind the legend.